ingredient in bread. Now, we uh, probably all know that, and, but we spent some time over the last month establishing that and being reminded of that, that yeast is a key ingredient in bread. Like there's a piece of, there's a loaf of bread down here. It gives it lift, you know? And it gives it strength. It strengthens the gluten. And it gives it character. Yeast gives the bread character. So it's not just a lifeless lump of dough. Okay? Now, yeast also is a key ingredient in wine. It helps with the fermentation. And I went online last night and I was looking and realized, wow, there's all kinds of specialty yeast. How many of you do that? There's like yeast for some of you don't. Okay, some of you did. Good. Thank you for participating. There'll be a prize at the end. No, no. Stay engaged. Uh, there's bread machine yeast. There's a yeast for wine, dry wine, different kinds of wine. Yeast is a key ingredient. And here's, here's the other simple truth. Is that, is that um, maybe some of you knew this. I know, I know more about bread baking today than I did a month ago, by the way. How many of you have ever heard of proofing, proofing the yeast? You know about that? You take some of the yeast and you put it like in a cup or whatever in some, some water at a certain temperature and you put some sugar in there and you see what happens. You know, you proof it. Is it going to be good yeast or bad yeast? Because bad yeast, bad yeast will affect the whole loaf. Well, get that, yes? Okay. Does Domino's Pizza use yeast in its pizza dough, Eric? Yeah. So you're all over this. You've got this down, right? If you have bad yeast, it means that when the Domino's guy shows up at your door, you're going to have a bad pizza. Is that right? Flat. Flat. It'll be flat. And we don't want flat pizzas. We want round pizzas. No. We want pizzas with lift. We want pizzas with character. But you guys get it. You get the simple point of yeast. Jesus was talking about yeast, and that's the gospel lesson. Jesus said, be on your guard against the yeast of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. And when I was thinking about being on your guard, being vigilant, being protected, I wasn't thinking about like some wimpy looking like guard with a big goofy hat that guards Buckingham Palace. Yes? I was thinking about like, you know, Marines. I was thinking about United States sheriffs. Um, you know, these are guards. I'm not, it's kind of like how I think of angels. I don't like to think of God's angels as wimpy little feathers and, and, and a gold halo. I like to think about God's angels as these big muscular guys like that that are ready to kill evil. Yeah? Yeah. So Jesus says, be on your guard against the yeast of the Pharisees. Be on your guard against the attitudes. The attitudes and the teachings of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Pay attention. This is what he's saying to us. Attitude matters. Jesus says, pay attention, be vigilant, keep, keep safe yourself, your head, your heart, the attitudes. And I will drill down a little bit deeper as you look at that particular gospel lesson and all the gospels and say that Jesus is saying, be on your guard, my children, against attitudes of religious arrogance and or religious apathy. It's like two ends of the spectrum. Arrogance, apathy. And I'm going to unpack that a little bit because this is important. This is essential. This is vital. And we're talking about vital signs. We're talking about taking a look at our lives and the way we live our lives and making determinations, making decisions. Our, uh, our habits and, and, and our activities and our attitudes. Are they life-giving or are they life-taking? That's the big picture point. See, let's unpack this about Pharisees. As many of you, maybe you've never heard a lot about them, you kind of had an idea that they wore the black hats and Jesus wore the white hat, right? You know, they were the... How many of you grew up watching WWF, professional wrestling? Just me? Oh, good. We are kindred spirits here, right? Yeah, professional wrestling gets that. They get that whole idea of good guys and bad guys, right? You know? And even if you didn't watch wrestling, did you grow up watching westerns? Anybody? Yeah, Hopalong, Cassidy, Lone Ranger, good guys, bad guys. Maybe, let me update this. Did you grow up watching, uh, you know, The Terminator, Arnold Schwarzenegger, and all that kind of stuff, right? Part of what that was about is a play on good guys and bad guys, all right? Point is, the Pharisees, here's why Jesus was challenged by them and why he had a problem with them. Pharisees, and why Jesus said, be on your guard against their attitudes, don't get their attitude, is that the Pharisees, for one thing, they were obsessed, obsessed with habits and practices related to purity. Now, here's what I mean by that. The Pharisees were a group of people, men, men, 
okay? In Jesus' day, they, it was kind of a mindset, it was kind of a religious order, if you will, related to the temple. And they had God's law, and then they had their own man-made man -made rules, their interpretations. The Pharisees were obsessed with keeping their rules, their interpretations, as, and, and kind of keeping God's law, because it was all about how we approach God. Now that's important to keep in mind. Jesus' problem with them was, is that they had a lot of rituals and traditions and their own rules that they had decided were like the litmus test on whether you were good enough or bad. How to approach God. Jesus, Jesus uh, was teaching, on the other hand, you see, love. And Jesus was teaching grace. And Jesus was teaching humility. And Jesus was teaching an attitude. An attitude of gratitude. That rhymes, and I don't want to get silly with that, but he was teaching gratitude and generosity. He was teaching, Jesus, was teaching that we approach God through the condition of our heart and our head and our faith and our receptiveness to God, not through empty rituals. That's the difference. The Pharisees had attitudes that led to practices that basically said, that said, if you don't do what we do, say the Pharisees, if you don't do what we do, if you don't follow our rules, if you don't eat like we eat, or worship like we worship, or dress like we dress, then you don't matter. So if you read through the Gospels, this is why there was a lot of tension between Jesus and the Pharisees. Because in effect, the Pharisees said to Jesus, you don't matter. Because you're not doing what we do. We have set the rules. We have made a determination. You're not good enough. You're not pure enough to approach God, let alone be part of the religious community. That was the Pharisees. That's why Jesus had a problem with it. It was religious arrogance. It was arrogance that said, we have this test. And if you don't meet our test, we will look down our noses at you. You all know that saying, right? You grew up, my mom said that, right? You know? Yeah. And, I, and, and so here I want to update this, because a lot of times we think that the Pharisees just lived in Jesus' time, but I'm going to tell you that the, that the Pharisaic attitudes are alive and well. They are. This happens, and Jesus said, beware, be on your guard. Be on your guard against, be on your guard against the attitudes of the Pharisees. You know, it came up this last week, um, over the last several weeks, there's been a series of articles in the Dubuque TH about how to dress, okay? And, and uh, um, somebody nicely, I guess, I guess they were being nice, hung this, cut out this article and hung it on our bulletin board last week, called, What Would You Wear to a Meeting with God? How many of you read this in the newspaper? And let me say again, brothers and sisters, pharisaic thought is alive and well. Okay? There's several things about this that bother me. Number one, let me just take one. If God is keeping score, like with the clipboard, on whether I have a tie on or dress pants, or whether Terry's wearing a dress, or whether Mike is uh, wearing blue jeans, if this is the God that's suggested in a dress code for church, I don't want to worship that God. Amen? Amen. Amen. Here's our code here at Grandview. Is everybody listening? You ready? Yeah. Close. <laughs> Riley's with me. Yeah. Let me say it again. Here's our dress code. Clothes. Okay? Close. This article went on to say, you know, it's about a level of respect. It isn't, it isn't an issue of who does not belong in a place of worship. It's a matter of what does not belong there. It's, um, you know, it displays a level of respect. If it's not good enough for a date, you shouldn't, you know, wear it to church. It's not good enough for God. And of course, my first kind of smart aleck response was, if it's good enough for a date, it's good enough for God. What if my date's at the beach? Is that okay? No? There's some people, including me, you don't want to walk in here in a Speedo. Amen? <laughs> so this is flawed thinking, and I'll stand by it. I understand where some of this thinking is coming from, but I'm going to use it again to say we must be careful, as Jesus said, of phar pharisaic thought that says unless you dress like we dress and act like we act and, and do what we do, you are no good. Can you imagine can you imagine saying to visitors, now here's our rules. We don't care how badly you're hurting. We don't care how badly life is 
turned you upside down. We don't care how desperately you're seeking hope. We don't care about that as much as we care about our comfort level of making sure you're dressed appropriately. And you know, does it sound like I'm a little fired up about this? Because I am. I think that this is the kind of stuff, and I'll go to this kind of article, and these kinds of attitudes that have helped kill organized religion in the United States. I believe that strongly. It says, you're, you, you know, you've got to dress a certain way. I'm going to quote, I'm going to quote my friend Aaron LaFoe. Aaron and I were talking about it. Aaron's up there doing lights. We were talking about it last week. And he said, yeah. He said, that's like somebody wears a suit and tie to church. It looks good. It looks great. Then they go home and beat their wife. Is that any good? You see his point? Do you see his point? All right. It's, I didn't mean to go off on it so much. Let me go back online. <laughs> it's not about clothes. Here at Grandview, we want you to wear clothes and we want you to come because we're going to assume that you're seeking God and that you're wanting healing and you're wanting help. And if you're most comfortable wearing a three-piece suit or if you want to rent a tuxedo or if you want to wear a, a, an evening gown, let me just say this clearly. It is much, much, much more important that we have your head and your heart and your, your body in this place worshiping God than what you are clothing your body with. Are you with me? Yes. Yes. Good. Thanks, Riley. Got my own amen section down. <laughs> Jesus says, guard against this attitude. Guard against it. Guard against the yeast of the Pharisees. Guard against an arrogant attitude that will separate you, that, 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 will, that will put you in a position where you judge people on trivial, silly things. And one of those people may be Christ himself. You ever thought about that? Jesus says, beware of the yeast of the Pharisees, because the Pharisees' attitudes were not vital to the Christian movement. Let's take it to that level. They are not vital to the Christian movement. Jesus knew then, and Jesus knows today, that if his followers, those who proclaim to be his followers, if we adopt Pharisaic attitudes of arrogance and all kinds of rules for our worship that separate people, Jesus knew then and Jesus knows now that the Christian movement will die. Back then, he knew that if his followers became like Pharisees, the Christian movement would not catch fire, it would not sweep over the world as it has. That's why Jesus says, watch your attitude. Attitudes matter. Attitudes matter. Now, quickly, he said the same thing about the Sadducees. The Sadducees were another group that had an attitude problem. If the Pharisees were on the one end of the spectrum of arrogance, if anything, the Sadducees were on the other end of the spectrum of apathy. Apathy in the form, in the sense that Jesus' problem with the Sadducees, that religious group, is that they watered down the faith so they could fit in. They watered down the faith so they could conform. Jesus' problem with the Sadducees is that they were wanting to accommodate the Romans. That's who was in charge politically, right? And so they just wanted to go along and get along as long as they had power and authority. They watered it down and didn't want to offend anyone. Jesus says this, church, watch out, watch for that kind of yeast. As I interpret it, Jesus says, you must stand for something. You can't stand for everything or you will stand for nothing. Does that make sense to everybody? Yeah. Not to the extreme of the Pharisees. But Jesus says, beware of this yeast. Be on your guard of this key, vital ingredient in your attitude. And don't just go for the current fad or the flavor of the month. Sadducees. That was the attitude of the, sad, of the Sadducees. And Jesus, let me sum this up by saying what Jesus taught then and taught today is right here. <clears throat> Conform? No. We're supposed to be countercultural. The other thing he's saying is, attitude matters. You've been seeing that on the, on the slides this morning. Did you notice it? Did you see it on the slides? I want to get burned in our heads and burned in our hearts. Attitude matters. Jesus says it's like yeast in the bread. It will affect the whole flavor of the bread. It will affect the whole flavor of the loaf. I was talking to a, 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 a retired teacher this week. And we were talking about this. And she said, all the years that I taught school, there were some classes I had. All it took was one student in that class to have a bad attitude. And it affected the whole class. Make sense? Amen? Attitude matters. Attitude matters. Like yeast in the bread, it will affect the whole loaf. It will affect it like yeast in the grape juice. You know, grape juice, sugar, yeast, it's either going to be wine or it's going to be vinegar. Right? It matters. Attitude